Welcome to another unit in this methodology toolbox. This time I'm going to talk about interdependencies and how we can actually analyze or model them. Short word in advance, interdependencies, this means that as compared to the study of dependencies where we have dependent and independent variables, here in this case we cannot really differentiate between independent dependent variables because Every variable used here could be, or in many cases is, at the same time dependent and independent. Because here we assume we have like a network, all the different aspects interacting with each other. And I want to give you like six short examples what you can do if you want to study these interdependent relationships. The first, the classical one, is cluster analysis. That's about grouping of observations, grouping of variables. That's for, for example, petitioning your customers into different groups. That's one way. A similar approach, more on the graphical side of things, is multidimensional scaling. That's the idea. You consider multidimensional objects as with cluster analysis. You have different points with different characteristics, different features. Whereas with cluster analysis, you can use different approaches. Multidimensional scaling simply tries to reduce this to two or slightly more dimensions so that you can, for example, illustrate this in a two-dimensional diagram and show which are closer together, which are further apart from each other, making your very complex objects describable. Maybe coming up with the idea that there's like underlying concepts which you can use to group all of your different participants, all of your different products, firms, whatever you're studying. Then we have factor analysis. Factor analysis is usually used if you want to come up or study, analyze different scales, or rather consider whether different variables have an overlying idea, have something which is inherent to them, and you want to find out, first off, which variables share some inherent well, similarity and how good is if you build a new variable, build it on this inherent characteristic, how good is this new variable? How much of the original variance of the variables you used can whatever you get as an output describe? So how fitting is it in describing whatever came as input. And well, later on, you want to actually assign your input variables to the new inherent variables. You want to be able to calculate the inherent, or in this case, the um, more or less artificial variables. And that's what's also been done with factor analysis. Here you basically come up with new variables variables which measure something or describe something which is not measurable directly. For example, sustainability. You can ask someone 20 questions on different sustainable behavior, but having one answer like how sustainable are you? This doesn't really describe very well how sustainable someone is. Having the 20 questions on sustainability and then deducing the commonality of those 20 questions which is sustainability. This can work. That's what factor analysis does. Then we have social network analysis. That's more or less on modeling and then analyzing interactions between different actors, different firms, different participants. That can have different applications from studying social media networks, real social networks, but this can also be firm networks. This can be used in the context of supply chain analysis. 
if you have a very big network, you can find out, for example, who's the most important player in this network. So this is more on specific positions in the network, the relations in the network, development of the network as such. Finally, we have structural equation models. That's like an integration of factor analysis into complex regression models. Thereby, well, if we have factor analysis here, here we have the structural equation models, which expand the idea of factor analysis by including this on, at least the middle part, some kind of advanced regression approach. And finally, we have artificial neural networks. Depending on how you model them, they can take different forms. They can also do something like social network analysis, they can also be used as a different approach to regression analysis, for example. So here it's always a question, how do I actually work with these artificial neural networks? What are you using them for? What are you going to model with these networks? Well, that's just first glance, first six, I would say classical or more traditional approaches to working, to modeling interdependencies. So I hope you enjoyed this short session. This concludes it so far and I say goodbye. See you next time.